Hey there everyone, once again, we are at the Met Office. This is the UK's weather and climate service. We're here in the library with head archivist, Catherine Ross, and today, barometers. We're gonna show you some barometers, and then we're gonna show you a barometer that is gonna blow your mind. But first, just a bog standard barometer. Pretty nice though, tell us about it. So. A barometer uses mercury and it's intended to measure air pressure. So in a high pressure, nice weather, the mercury will rise and in a low pressure, bad weather, the mercury will go down. Okay. And by reading where the mercury is, it helps us to know what the weather's doing and what the weather's going to do. And this is one of the key indicators for weather, isn't it? The yeah. atmospheric pressure. It's yeah, like it's, it's really kind of, you know, 101, you start with the pressure, everything else is a nice addition, really, really useful addition, but you can tell an awful lot just from a barometer. Okay, and this one here, you were telling me, it's on a kind of a gimbal here. You see it moving around? Why is that? So these sort of designs of barometer were designed to be on ships, but you want your barometer to be able to stay upright while the ship is rolling. So by putting it on a gimbal, it can just always stay upright while the ship might be doing something you know around 30 or 40 degree yawing um, so it, again it helps it helps it to measure correctly and tell you everything you actually need to know nicely weighted at the bottom yeah there too, again right? that just helps it to swing with the ship okay that's all well and good but let's show you something a little bit more special over here a little bit more exciting i mean exciting mm. <laughs> yeah. i think it's exciting you, you particularly find this one exciting i like this barometer but you like it particularly because of this word here fitzroy yep so admiral fitzroy he's the founder of the met office yep so that's one reason why i'm kind of keen on the guy when he started the met office it was all about collecting observations and then he decided that he could use those observations to make weather forecasts one of the things that he used was the telegraph system so he could get uh, forecasts out to the big ports but little fishing villages, there's no way they've got a telegraph. But he still wanted them to have some way of forecasting the weather. Because at this time, you know, 1850s, a big storm could knock out 40% of the working population of a fishing village overnight. You know, it had huge human consequences. This guy had been at sea all his life. He actually cared about saving lives whatever level of society you were at. And so he worked with Negretti and Zambra, who were a, a very well-known instrument maker, to kind of tweak a standard barometer and make it more user-friendly for the fishermen. They don't have meteorological training. They've not had a significant education. So basically he sort of took your standard barometer, but the critical thing he wrote was this little kind of nursery rhyme here. And it says, long foretold, long last, short notice soon passed. And then on the other side, first rise after low, foretells stronger blow. And believe it or not, that's all you need to know what the weather's gonna do. Long last, short, no, I think you'd be in big trouble if I was in the fishing village. <laughs> Tell me what that means. The general idea is if the pressure is dropping really slowly, you know, it's probably a big low pressure system coming in really slowly and it's going to pivot really slowly and it's going to move away really slowly. You're not going to be going to sea for days. Right. Um, but if it suddenly drops really quickly, OK, it's probably going to be a really nasty storm, but it will probably be over quite quickly because that pressure's dropped really fast. So it's quite fast moving. Okay. So you've got a shot at getting back to sea in a couple of days time, not a week's time, you know, which is helpful if you're trying to feed a family. Yeah. And then on the other side, this essentially means that from kind of two or three observations, you know what's going on. These would have been put up in public places. So sometimes they were on the side of the, of the lifeboat house. Sometimes they're on the pub. Sometimes they're on the harbour wall. Somewhere anybody could see them. And they'd get off the boat and they'd have a look and, OK, re read the mercury or even just get an idea of where it was. Come down the following morning, mercury's dropped. OK, that's not a good sign probably won't go out to sea. And then I'll come back and the mercury's risen. Yeah, so we've had some bad weather, mercury's risen. But in a, in a storm, essentially, you know, you get your first bit of bad weather, but then you get your second bit of bad weather as it moves over you. So by taking that first sign it's going up is the kind of warning, no, don't go out yet, there's more to come. So then you come back and you have a look again. Oh, it's gone up again. Right, now it's gone. Now it's safe for me to go to sea. 
Okay, and you call this a Fitzroy barometer. Yes. That was like a nickname for it because it was, it was his design. It was his design, his idea. Fitzroy, he, I mean, he's like a godfather of weather forecasting, isn't he? He's like a... He's well, he's the father of the Met. He's the founder of the Met Office. Yep. Um, he's the father of weather forecasting. He was also the captain of the Beagle. He took Darwin round the world. Yeah. You know, he's got quite a lot of history. <laughs> kind of a big deal. Yeah. There you go, a Fitzroy barometer. Now, we've got one more barometer for you. And I, I don't even know how to explain this. Let's just go and have a look. <laughs> this is cool. Look at this. We've opened the glass case so you can have a better look at this. This is a barometer. This, believe it or not, is a barometer. You're going to have to explain that. <laughs> so this doesn't use mercury. This uses leeches. Leeches? Yep. As in... Little blood sucky things. Blood yes. sucky leeches. Yeah. I can see you've even got a few fake <laughs> leeches here to, uh, to add to the effect. Yes, yes. We've got, the, we've got the odd rubber leech around just to sort of help with the idea. Not a real leech, but there you go. <laughs> but this would have real leeches in it, would mm -hmm, it? It would. It's quite important we note here that they're medical leeches, not normal leeches. Mm. Medical leeches just seem to be more sensitive. I don't know why, but they are. Okay. Um, but the general idea is when the pressure drops, you know, leeches are sensitive to that change in pressure. Mm. Pressure drop means bad weather, means rain. They don't want to be washed away from home, so they'll climb upwards so that you know, when the water level rises in the river, they don't get washed away. Right. Um, so they have a kind of a natural reaction to a drop in pressure, which is to climb. So you put 12 leeches in this, one per bottle, and then if the pressure drops, they will climb to the top of their bottle because they're trying to leave. And the aptly named George Merriweather, yeah. honestly, that was his name, designed the original of this. This is a replica, but it's the only working replica in the world. Yeah. He designed the original in 1851 and showed it at the Great Exhibition. So kind of, it's very Victorian bling. But it works. Your leech climbs to the top of your bottle and there it kind of meets this little bone switch, the little white thing. So it would knock that, which would release the chain, which would ring the bell. So the leeches are ringing the bell saying, low pressure coming. Yeah. Yeah. And enough of your jewelry of leeches ring the bell, yeah. you've got a forecast. Okay. Now this is before the Met Office. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This, this is, is not <laughs> currently used by the Met Office for weather forecasts that you see like on Twitter and stuff like that. No, really not. He was trying to think of it as a way to warn of storms. It was effective to a point. The leeches will climb the bottle. And he tried to test it because he had this in his home in London. Well, the, the original his home in London. And if his leeches you know, forecast, then he would send a, a, a telegraph message, telegram message to his friend who was at the Philosophical Society of Whitby. Yeah. Um, and obviously it couldn't beat the storm there, but it was date and time stamped. Right. So if they then had a storm, they could go, oh yeah, this was forecast. Now, of course, what he didn't really understand was that a storm taking place in London doesn't necessarily mean that the same storm's going to affect Whitby. It might do, it might not. Yeah. So, you know, it's not a given. The idea was there'd be little versions and there'd be big versions. But as I say, we believe only one was ever made. We don't think it really took off as an idea. But one thing that's interesting about this, if you like, is that, you know, 1851, we've got leeches and bottles. 1854, we found the Met Office. And by 1860, we've got real proper barometers in fishing villages actually giving a decent forecast. I'd love to go back in time and ask Admiral Fitzroy what he thought of this. I don't know what he thought of it. I honestly don't. Uh, but yeah, I suspect he might have had a few choice words. Can I ring the bell? Yeah. Do I pull this? Yeah, just, put, just pull it down. Yeah. Crash. <laughs> <laughs> nice. A huge thanks to everyone who supports our channel on Patreon. We couldn't do this without you. You can see just some of the names scrolling on the screen at the moment, and all our Patreon supporters get access to extra pictures and videos and bonus content as a little thank you for the help they're giving us. See the details down in the description in the comments. Every little bit helps. Thank you. Correction for capacities 154, neutral point, we've got capillary action, and temperature. That looks like a thermometer at the bottom there. Yep, that's right, yep. 